How did you find out that you were unable to run for election? Hey Sophie, good morning. Um, I got an email and the email said, thank you for applying. Um, you are unsuccessful to be taken forward as a candidate. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, I've been mayor since 2019, as you said. Um, this, so the area I cover is expanding. It will bring in other parts. So we'll be covering the wider Northeast. Um, I've delivered thousands of jobs. I've built affordable homes. Um, I've implemented a Green New Deal. We're tackling ch uh, child poverty across 90 schools in the region and expanding that. So when it comes to what the Labour Party needs to project to win elections, which is economic competence, I've got a fantastic track record. And for members not to be allowed the choice of putting me forward as the Labour representative is, is frankly shocking. And, and I've had so much support from right across the political spectrum. So what I want is for, for Keir and the Labour Party to do nothing more than give members the choice of choosing me as their candidate. So you got the email uh, saying that your application had been unsuccessful. Surely you must have known before that that this was going to happen. Um, well, no, you can't know till you get the email because because that's the, the decision being told. Um, so you go through uh, a process, you talk to the NEC panel, um, and we said, look, there's no issue with your competence. There is no issue with anti-Semitism. They were very, very clear about that. And they said it's an issue that because you spoke to Ken Loach, um, that may cause us electoral damage in future, was their argument. I said, if you think Labour's going to lose an election, because I spoke to Ken Loach, who was a really successful filmmaker, and he just produced a film in the North East. And I was asked, as part of the celebrations for the live theatre, would you have a conversation with Ken Loach? He said, yeah, of course I would, if it's just about his films, which it was. And that was it. You know, so that's one hour of my last four years as mayor. So to not let members have the choice and make that decision of do they want me to be their candidate, to me seems wholly disproportionate, if that is the reason, but that's not the reason. They don't, they don't give the reasons. I mean, Labour say that that was the reason uh, that you were not allowed to run, because as you say, you did share a platform with Ken Loach. You would say that it was just about the films that he made, but at the same time, this is somebody who's been you know, expelled uh, from the party, and I do just want to read you some of the things that Ken Loach has said, because when he was asked uh, if a in a discussion about whether or not the Holocaust happened was unacceptable, he said that history is for all of us to discuss. The founding of the State of Israel, for example, based on ethnic cleansing is there for us all to discuss. The role of Israel now is there for us all to discuss. So don't try and subvert that with false stories of anti-Semitism. That was when he was asked whether or not a discussion on whether the Holocaust happened would be acceptable. He's also said that the actions of the State of Israel make increasing anti-Semitism understandable. He said, if there has been a rise, I'm not surprised. In fact, it's perfectly understandable because Israel feeds feelings of anti-Semitism. I mean, surely you can see why sharing a platform with Ken Loach may be problematic. If, look, if you want to um, ask Ken about his views, then do that. I'm not a spokesperson for Ken Loach. Um, and let's be really clear um, that my combined authority under my leadership has adopted the I I IHRA definition of anti-Semitism and references the examples. I've been on Jewish labor movement um, training. Um, I work very closely with the Jewish Leadership Council, visit the synagogues in my region. So this is a, a, an entirely separate issue about Ken Loach's issues. You need to take up with Ken Loach. I'm not his spokesperson. Um, but he's produced that there's only been three feature films set in the Northeast in a couple of decades. I, Daniel Blake, sorry we missed you, and now The Old Oak. Um, so it is a big cultural significant issue for the Northeast. And to talk to him about films, I think, is entirely justified. I share platforms with all sorts of people. A couple of weeks ago, I was on the platform with Ben Hoochin. That does not mean I endorse the Tories' economic policies. At the same time, though, you, you, so you don't regret sharing a platform with Ken Loach, then? Um, I, I regret this entire episode now. <laughs> it's, it's, the whole thing's blown up. And now Labour members are not getting the opportunity but you to don't choose. Think it's, you don't think it was wrong of you to share a platform with Ken Loach? Um, I think the issues of speaking to somebody about something entirely different from a controversial issue. Um, and, you know, I, I, my understanding is that he's um, made all sorts of clarifications and he's not a Holocaust denier. I think he wrote a letter to the New, New York Times explicitly saying that the, the Holocaust was a real event, which, of course, it was. So, I, honestly, Sophie, I think we've got to get the proportionality here. What the public want from their politicians 
is to get on with things and deliver things and not to engage in culture wars, cancel culture or anything like that. I actually think that's electorally damaging. I guess some people might say that, you know, when issues of anti-Semitism within the Labour Party led to a big distrust by the Jewish community, Keir Starmer is trying to rebuild that trust that you sharing a platform with Ken Loach, who, you know, I've read out some of the things that he said when it comes to anti-Semitism, when it comes to Israel and the Holocaust, and you don't really think that is problematic. You think it's right that you talk to him about the films. I think we should let the members make that decision. Let's trust the Labour Party members to say, do we think that Jamie's done a good job as mayor? Do we think he'd win as an election? Do we think, actually, he's an electoral asset? Um, and I would think you would find that yes, actually, would be the result. There's a pattern of behaviour here, I think, that people who support renationalisation of the utilities, who support stronger workers' rights, are being excluded at lots of stages in the Labour Party, whether that's standing as MPs, whether that's frequently as councillors, people being deselected. I've spoken to mayors, MPs, people who are ministers in the new Labour administrations, all of whom are really worried the sword of Damocles is hanging above them and they're going to be next. So you think this is about factionalism in the Labour Party, effectively Keir Starmer purging the left? I think there's a big issue if you look at what's happened. Um, if you look at you know, some of the things that have happened to me recently, um, as a sitting mayor, I should automatically be allowed to contact members. I was asking for this for about two years and got um, a, a, it finally got an email from the regional director saying, because you are a potential candidate in a future election, we can't give you it. Everybody's a potential candidate. I've had Labour Party staff ringing. This is any, way before I spoke to Ken about films, saying, um, oh, you must disinvite Jamie because there may be an event coming up um, where there's going to be an, a selection for the Labour candidate. You know, this is, um, there is a big issue here um, about democracy about should people be allowed... That's how we do elections in a civilised country, isn't it, Sophie? You know, you let people decide, do they want their candidate? Why should you bar someone on the basis of that decision? I mean, I guess, you know, I'll just come back to... They would say that the barring is because of their huge concerns about taking a red line when it comes to anti-Semitism uh, and sharing platforms with people uh, in regards to that as well. I mean, have you read the... EHRC report into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. You talk about sharing the platform. So, yeah, if you... Um, the, the, I, Daniel Sorry, Blake... The, the, the question was about the EHRC report into anti-Semitism. Have you read the report? So, not the full report. No, I haven't. Um, I haven't read the full Ford report either. Um, you, you perhaps got to bear in mind, I'm not an opposition politician. I'm a Labour mayor in power delivering. My focus is on doing good things for the people in our region, not internal Labour Party management. I'm not involved in that in any sense at all, really. Um, so, you know, from, from 60, 70 hours a week, I'm delivering jobs, I'm building homes, I'm negotiating to get more money in the region, I'm currently negotiating with pension funds to get an extra £2 billion of investment for us. So the Labour Party management stuff. But here's the kicker. The Labour Party's official position on Ken Loach is we do not comment. You know, so you ask, you, you check for clarification, what's what's the appropriate procedure? And there isn't one. So how on earth are you supposed to avoid sharing a platform with someone that later turns out should be controversial? Um, this, The general public will look at this and think it's crazy. The successful mayor that has huge cross-party support and Labour members aren't even allowed the choice to vote for him. That's crazy. So what are your next steps? Is there any sort of appeals process? Are you going to run for another position? Um, well, um, I am still a Labour Party member. I'm still mayor for the next 11 months, no matter what happens. Um, I would like Kia to have a look at this. Um, I would like him to say, look, let's let the members decide. Uh, my trade union is backing me. I've got huge support from across the party. Um, I, I've had a look at the legal routes. It's not at all clear what they are. Um, and then, you know, I really do think that just... Let members choose who they want as their candidates. That's how democracy works. And I honestly think here, Sophie, actually, that in a two-party system, if you're going to ban people who are promoting socialist views from participating in that, that is really quite anti-democratic.